The Master's Mysteries, Tales of Magical Mastery, Episode 26. In the previous episode, the entire main hall of the Iron Bull sect was engulfed in a sea of fire. The roaring flames continuously made terrifying crackling sounds. After less than half an hour, there was a deafening explosion, and the entire hall collapsed. The blazing fire illuminated the entire sky. During the burning of the hall, the entire wooden army tightly surrounded the hall, guarding Leo Fengi and the others. At this moment, the wooden demon smirked, believing that these three individuals were undoubtedly going to die. However, he was actually mistaken. The collapse of the hall also alarmed the three individuals who had just jumped underground. The hall collapsed. Hurry, run inside, or else we'll end up as roasted chickens. At this moment, Liao Fengi and the others entered the underground space beneath the hall. However, due to the intense fire above, this area had turned into a stifling furnace with scorching heat. Master Dao, this is a dead end. Moreover, this underground chamber is not spacious. When Liao Fengi looked inside, he was instantly stunned. In the past, our master asked us to dig a vegetable cellar. Who would have thought we would accidentally dig through to an underground cavern? To everyone's surprise, Old Dao took a few steps forward and pushed aside a large wooden rack, revealing a natural cave behind it. Quick, let's go in. At this moment, the temperature inside was becoming increasingly higher. Regardless of where the cave led, the three of them hurriedly entered. It's somewhat more spacious ahead. The three of them walked for over half an hour, but the winding cave never revealed an exit. However, Old Dao suddenly noticed that there seemed to be a significantly larger space up ahead. Liao Fengi, concerned that Old Dao might recklessly enter and be in danger, quickly walked ahead. But to their surprise, as they stepped inside, a cool breeze blew, relieving them of the previous stuffiness and providing great comfort. Let's take a rest here. Inside the cave, there were some fluorescent minerals. Using the faint light they emitted, the space appeared to be several tens of square meters large, and there was even an underground lake in the middle. Fortunately, the arrows weren't poisoned. Just endure it for a while. At this point, the three of them were utterly exhausted. Additionally, Sheosha's wounds needed attention. Thus, they decided to take a rest there. I couldn't protect the Daoist temple after all. I'm truly sorry, Master. However, as soon as they sat down, they couldn't move anymore. None of them had iron bodies. After the long journey, Liao Fengi was still all right, but Old Dao and Teosha were completely drained, unable to get up from the ground. Don't think about it too much. Kid, don't be sad. As long as we have a safe haven, we won't worry about firewood. Seeing Chiosha's spirits down, Liao Fengi and Old Dao comforted him. Nobody wanted this outcome, but their current stake further fueled Liao Fengi and the other's determination to destroy the cult of immortals. Among the three, Chiosha had the weakest skills and was injured. The other two wanted him to rest for a while. But just then, they suddenly heard the sound of rushing water behind them. They turned around and saw a large blue fish leaping out of the small underground lake, then diving back in with a splash. This, there's water. And fish in it. Xiaoxia didn't think much of it, but Liao Fengi and Old Dao's eyes lit up. We're all smelly. Let's hurry and wash. Ha ha. Daoist, here I come. The presence of fish in the water indicated that it was pure and fresh. They had been rushing all the way to Mount Funyu and had been running around in the fire tonight, covered in sweat and dirt. Being able to clean up was truly wonderful. Moreover, the three of them hadn't touched a grain of rice for two full days, and their stomachs were growling with hunger. When they saw fish in the underground lake, how could their eyes not light up? Kid, get another one. I can't. My belly is about to burst. Inside the cave, there were many tree roots that had descended. Old Dao gathered a large bundle of them and started a bonfire. The three of them ate fish one after another, and when it wasn't enough, 
they went to catch more. They only stopped when they could see fish flesh in their open mouths. After taking a bath and satisfying their hunger, they sat by the warm bonfire and quickly fell into a deep sleep. Their slumber was so sound that the world seemed to fade away. You're saying they're all gone. After some time had passed, Ahu, who had been gathering information, rushed back. It seemed that the large fire above had been extinguished and the members of the wooden army had all retreated. Due to the numerous branching paths in the cave, the three of them didn't dare to wander around aimlessly. Now that they knew the situation outside, they retraced their steps back to the Iron Bull sect. Lifting the stone slab, Liao Fengi helped Old Dao and Chiu Xia up. But as they emerged, the sight before them weighed heavily on their hearts. The entire Iron Bull sect had now turned into scorched earth. It seemed that the wooden army didn't want to leave behind even a single tile. After burning the main hall, they set fire to the rear hall and side halls as well. It's over. It's all over. Burned and destroyed. Overnight, the once Grand De Waste Temple had become a ruin. Chiosha, looking at everything in front of him, fell to his knees, sobbing in anguish. I'm sorry, master. I'm sorry, deceased senior brothers. Shiyosha was an orphan. He was taken in and raised by the sect master when he was young, and this Dewis temple was his home. When many people left after the decline of the temple, he chose to stay and guard it. Shiyosha's mournful cries deeply touched Liao Fengi. What's the use of crying? Shiyosha, what we need to do now is seek revenge. However, just then, Old Do grabbed hold of Shiosha's clothes. He also held deep affection for this Dewis temple, but even if they rushed in and fought desperately, it would be futile. They couldn't change the fact that the temple was destroyed. As long as we're here, we can rebuild the temple to honor our master's spirit in the heavens. Seeing the devastation before them, Old Dao's eyes became moist. I swear, I will not let the demonic followers of the Cult of Immortals go unpunished. I also want revenge. Kiyosha understood that Old Dao was right. Even if they charged forward and fought to the death, it would be in vain. They couldn't change the outcome of the temple's destruction. We must seek revenge for our master and the others. Master Dao, count me in. We will definitely seek revenge. Old Dao's words had an effect. Shiosha wiped away his tears and clenched his fists. By the way, Master Dao, I have an idea. They'd probably think we were burned to death. Suddenly, Liao Fengi thought of something. Ever since they arrived in Mount Funyu, they had been targeted. The enemy came wave after wave. Why don't we conduct a night raid and strike at their lair? The Cult of Immortals. Back then, they were in the light while I was in the dark which naturally put me at a disadvantage. But now, it's the opposite. Why don't we take advantage of this opportunity and launch a surprise attack when the enemy is off guard? You're right. Let's go. His proposal seemed reasonable to Old Dao as well. The three of them decided to enter the tiger's den, taking an unconventional approach. But Chiosha's martial arts are weak, and he's injured. Liao Fenghi and Old Dao decided to leave him behind. As they journeyed, it was just as Tiger Lady had said. Everywhere was layered with the defensive network of the Cult of Immortals. It was practically impossible for an ordinary person to get close without being detected. However, with Ahu's help, Liao Fengi advanced as the vanguard, constantly scouting for information. Whenever she discovered the presence of the Cult of Immortals' demonic followers, he would promptly notify Liao Fengi. Not wanting to alert the enemy, the two of them avoided people whenever they encountered them, continuously weaving through the dense forest. They didn't even dare to take a deep breath. Master Dao, is that the place? Fortunately, they hadn't been detected by the enemy along the way. They had been stealthily traveling for two days and two nights, and finally, they had arrived at their destination. From a distance, just as Tiger Lady had said, the Cult of Immortals was built beneath a steep cliff, deeply embedded within the mountainside. There were many guards at the entrance, 
making it impossible for outsiders to approach. At this moment, it was noon, and for some reason, there was a large group of over a hundred people lining up and walking towards the stone gate. Those people appeared to be ordinary villagers, clasping their hands together in front of their chests, displaying deep devotion. It seemed as if they were coming to participate in some kind of grand ritual. No, we should come back at night. Seeing the tight security and thorough inspections at the stone gate, it was impossible for the two of them to infiltrate the cult of immortals by blending in with the group. It seemed they would have to wait until nightfall to take action. The two of them returned to the depths of the forest, resting throughout the afternoon. As the moon reached its zenith and silence enveloped the surroundings, Ahu took the lead and cautiously approached the stone gate of the cult of immortals. What should we do? However, to their dismay, there were still guards at the stone gate. It was impossible to enter through the gate. Old Dao became increasingly anxious, scratching his head. Master Dao, look. After observing the surroundings, Liao Fengyi noticed a small window with iron railings on the side of the stone gate, slightly elevated. She suggested climbing up to take a look. Master Dao's master left behind a precious sword known for its sharpness, capable of cutting through gold and jade. Perhaps it could sever the railings, allowing them to crawl inside through this opening. Relying on their martial arts skills and the slightly larger gaps in the stone, providing places to grip and step on, they quickly climbed up to the area near the small window. They leaned close to the window, straining to see inside. To their surprise, when they saw the condition of the room, they were on the verge of exclaiming in shock. It was a sizable stone chamber, with many men locked inside. These men were in tattered clothes, looking emaciated and exhibiting signs of abnormal behavior. The room contained dozens of individuals, and their haunting screams echoed one after another. The sound was chilling, sending shivers down one's spine. Old Dao suddenly recalled hearing that the leader of the Cult of Immortals was concocting elixirs, and these people were likely his test subjects. Seeing this, the two of them were filled with intense hatred, their teeth itching with frustration. The Cult of Immortals had committed such heinous crimes against the people, truly losing their humanity. However, while they were fixated on the horrifying scene, they failed to notice that they had already been discovered. It seemed that this night infiltration of the Cult of Immortals would inevitably lead to yet another fierce battle.